Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In the last session we discussed in length about API gateways and at the end I told you that we will be having a hands-on demo for API gateways in the next session. But to spice things up, why not design a small and a simple service that will help us understand API gateways and AWS Lambda in a better way, isn't it? So today we will work on a small project where we will understand how we can use AWS API gateways along with AWS Lambda to fetch our data from AWS S3. So if you're ready, let's begin. But before moving forward to the AWS console, let's understand the requirements here. So initially, our users at Team A were uploading files to AWS S3 bucket and the users at team B used to download or use them directly from the bucket. Post which there was a requirement that all the data that the users are going to download should be base64 encoded. So we made a design change and for the base64 encoding we introduced a simple lambda function. And to provide the users a bit of convenience, we thought of providing them with an API endpoint resource so that they can pull the data they need. So now let's check out how we can get this done. So for the first step that we are going to do is basically having a AWS S3 bucket. So if you have already created a bucket, then it is well and good. You can use the same thing. So I'll just go ahead and click on S3. That is a service that we are going to use the S3 bucket. So just click on S3 or you can just type here as well S3. S3 and you can use it. Okay. So here you can just click on S3. And I have a lot of buckets already in my uh, S3 store. So I'm going to use this bucket, my new web bucket. And there are a lot of files here that are already available to me. So I can use any of these uh, to simulate the scenario that we are having, like we are trying to download these files. So what happens, I will be uploading files to this bucket that I have. And you also can create your own buckets, not a problem. Okay, so this is the first resource that we want. So we are done with the S3 part. Okay, so the next thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to create a Lambda function, isn't it? So let's go to Lambda. So for that, you can just click on the services and just type Lambda and you will get the service drop down there. So you can just click on Lambda here. So as I've already created a function before, so it is showing me the direct page where all the functions are listed. But if you are new and if you haven't created any Lambda functions, you will be shown with this page. Okay, so this is the one that will be shown to you. So here there is a very beautiful demo that uh, actually Lambda provides and I want you guys to check that out as well. So the first thing that you read here is AWS Lambda and uh, the next thing is lets you run code without thinking about servers. And that is the most important and the beautiful aspect of using Lambda. And you pay only for the compute time that you consume. There is uh, no charge when your code is not running. Uh, with Lambda, you can run code for virtually any type of applications or backend service, all with zero administration. Okay, so let's see how it works. So here is a simple demo that uh, we can run. So I'm going to use Python because uh, I know a bit of Python. So not a problem with that. So you can use any of the languages that you are familiar with. So there's so here is a lambda handler actually basically this is the function that is going to be executed and by default sorry and by logic it should return hello from lambda isn't it so i'll just run it okay so it printed hello from lambda isn't it so we did not create any instances here or, or we did not install any python packages here to run this code we just wrote the code here and it executed for us and uh, that's how we got the result and that's the convenience of using serverless okay so next is how actually lambda responds to events so if you click on this you will see there are so many events that lambda can process information for okay so there is a mobile phone where we can get the mobile or iot backend data so if you click on this the message passes through the mobile or iot backends and here is the streaming data or it can be from the kinesis or any message broker that you have 
or here it is the uh, file it can be from your s3 bucket that is being processed with the data that you have and here the lambda actually is taking streams of data from everywhere and it is trying to process it isn't it so whenever the application stream or the data uh, flow increases it basically scales up automatically as you can see when i'm clicking on it repeatedly it just scales automatically because the number of input is getting increased every time when i'm clicking on it see you can see it is increasing the number of instances or the background processing power that it has whenever the traffic increases okay so next is basically here you can see that lambda responds to events once you create lambda functions you can configure them to respond to events from a variety of sources try sending a mobile notification stream data to lambda or place a photo in the s3 bucket okay so that is what it is trying to tell you uh, as what we have already discussed now so the next thing is basically to see how it scales seamlessly so this is the number of invocation that you have and this is the price that you're going to pay okay so let's suppose i am going to continuously click on streaming analysis and let's see how much the cost is going to increase for us see when i'm trying to increase by sending it a lot of input see after 1 million requests or invocation the price has increased okay and let's suppose i keep on pushing the data here but if you see gradually with with higher amount of invocations you see the cost becomes highly reasonable so that is why amazon lambda is considered to be a highly effective uh, processing power that we need so here also what you've seen is lambda scales up and down automatically to handle your workloads and you don't pay anything when your code isn't running so your first 1 million requests or uh, 400,000 GB seconds of compute per month are free. I think we have discussed in length about the pricing model for Lambda. So I don't think so we can uh, discuss it anymore. You can just go ahead and read them in the documentation. Okay, so the next thing that we have here is to create the function itself. Okay, so let's click on create function. And here I'm not going to use a blueprint or any serverless app repository. I'll just create it from scratch. Okay. And I'll give my function a name. So my function's name can be anything like uh, So here I'm going to use Python 3.7. Okay. And there is a permission levels also you can add where you can add uh, the execution rules that you want. So the one that I'm going to use is basically S3 because I want execution rules for S3. So there are three options here. You can create a new role with basic Lambda permissions or you can use an existing role or you can create a new role from AWS policy templates. Okay, if you click on create a new role from AWS policy templates, it means that either you don't have an existing policy or you have a separate requirement for your uh, uh, new function that you're creating. Okay, so here I'm just going to create a new role so click on this and give it a name so i'm just going to copy this and uh, i'm just giving, uh, i'll just give it a name as hyphen role okay here i want to use amazon s3 so i'll just use amazon s3 object read only permission and if you don't find it just type s3 and you will get both of them okay so you can just use object read only permissions for now and if suppose you want a delete permission or anything you can explicitly do that from iim as well but uh, i'll be using this one for now so you can just click on this because we are going to read the s3 objects isn't it so this is the permission that i need for now and uh, what we have done right now we have selected the author from scratch we have given the function name i have given the runtime that is the language that i want to use that is python 3.7 the permission type that i want this create a new role from aws policy templates and here i have given the template as amazon s3 object read only permissions okay so the next thing is create function okay so now your function is created okay so successfully created the function my s3 function demo now you can change its code and configuration to invoke your function with the test event choose test okay so now what we have to do is we have to just move around this form and i'll explain you uh, some of the things that are important to us okay so this thing that you see here is a designer you can actually add trigger points or you can add destinations to this and you can create a workflow here as well so once you click on add triggers you can see from which all services you can trigger aws lambda see you have so many services like api gateway aws iot 
Alexa skill uh, skills kit or application load balancer you can also invoke it from the application load balancers or cloudwatch code commit uh, dynamo db kinesis s3 sns sqs and there are so many other integrations that you can have okay so when you select one of them you can add them as a trigger point from which you are going to trigger this function okay and there is one more thing called destination so here we have the destination types as sns topic sqs queue lambda functions or event bridge okay and you can choose what type of source it will be like it will be a will it be a asynchronous invocation or it will be a stream invocation okay and here there is one more condition that you can add whether your function invocation or the destination invocation will be based on whether your function has failed or on success okay so these are a few things that you can also do it but for now i'll just focus on the task at hand and this is basically your ide for writing your lambda function it has all the details and here if you see that if you want to use any python libraries explicitly that are not available by default with python you have to create a package and you have to upload it to lambda so that is one more thing that we will do later on but that's not required as of now so you have this function and this is the lambda handler so when you create a lambda function you actually specify a handler which is the function in your code that AWS Lambda can invoke when the service executes your code. So if you see AWS function or the AWS Lambda functions will have Lambda handlers as the function within which you write your code. So as you see here, we have the AWS Lambda handler. So there's the function Lambda handler within which we will write our code. And the Lambda handler function actually takes two parameters in normal cases. That is first one is event and the other one is context. So event parameter is used to pass event data to your handlers. So this is mostly like a dictionary, but you can also pass list, string, integer or none type types as well. Uh, you might ask why is it different? Because the trigger points are different. So you might think like why is it like different based on like a dictionary or a string or a list. So some might send string data, some might send integer data or some might send JSON. So it depends on the trigger points on how the Lambda handler actually receives the data as a part of its input. So like for example, it can come from Cognito or it can come from API Gateway or it can come from Amazon Lex or Kinesis, anything for that matter, which can act as a trigger, isn't it? So and the context is used as a parameter that actually provides the runtime information to your handler. It's like passing the context object. And one of the context method is get remaining time in milliseconds, which returns number of milliseconds left before the execution times out. So similarly, we have methods like uh, AWS underscore request underscore ID, which can get you the request ID for the execution. There's a list of methods that you can have with context. You can read them in the documentation as well. So now that you have a good idea of what are events and context, let's move on. So to execute this program, what you have to do is you have to just click on test. Okay, so here you have to configure a test event. So you can just give an event name here, my event name or something of your choice okay these are by default parameters that you're going to pass and then you can just click on create so it has created an event name test uh, event okay so you can just click on this and you can start the test okay so now the response has been received as status code is 200 and hello from lambda so this is the thing that actually we have returned when we executed the lambda handler okay so now uh, you must understand a few things here so let's suppose i want to show you something so import time okay i'll just type import time and i'll just give here time dot sleep of five okay and let us just save this and let's run the test see so now it failed as you can see here, task timed out after three seconds. Why did it happen here? Like if you see here, go here as well in the execution details, you will find that it has timed out. This is because the default setting that you have here, the basic seconding that you have here, if you did it on this portion, you will see the default timeout that has been set is three seconds. So you have to increase it to, it can depend on what your requirements are. I'll just increase it to three minutes. Okay and you can just save it okay so the next time when you're trying to execute it and it times out come here 
and then uh, try to execute this okay so if i just uh, click on test once again it should not fail for me even if i have increased the time of execution to five seconds see now it has passed again okay so it's a bit simple isn't it we are going to see like how actually we are getting the logs generated here so if you go here this is the summary that you have uh, the this is the request id this actually what i was saying right aws request id you can print this as well using your context and here you also can print the memory use 128 mb okay or the max memory used okay and here if you see we are getting the log outputs isn't it so here if you see we have the cloudwatch log group if you click here Okay, so here, once you come here to CloudWatch, you can see here, if you see the log group has already been created, that is a slash AWS slash Lambda slash my S3 function demo. And for this, we can have the logs generated. Okay, so if you click here, you can see the logs have been generated. Okay, so these are the logs that have been generated. But how did they get generated? Because we have given them the permission that comes by default. So if you click on permissions, you can see we have Amazon CloudWatch logs and what are the resources and action that it can take? So it can take three actions or it can perform three actions and it can uh, execute two on two resources. Okay, so what are the resources it can execute? So it can create log groups, it can create log streams and it can put log events. So it can create the log group here and the log streams that you see here, it can clear this log stream and it can put the data as well okay and can put the logs as well okay so three operations and uh, by actions so it can create log groups create log streams and create log events okay so by actions and by resource so these are the two resources so the next thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to pull the information or the data that we have from our s3 bucket isn't it so go back to the s3 so we have this s3 bucket right now where we have the data and this is the lambda function that we have created right now so we have to write the code now to pull the data from the s3 isn't it so let's do that so this is the bucket that i wanted to access the data from so i'll click on this and uh, it is inside pytholic so i already have a sample text 01 so that is what I'll be using to extract the data from. So for this, I'll be using the Boto3 module and I'll tell you like uh, how it exactly works. So for now, we don't need this code. So you can just delete this and I'll start typing the code. Okay. So first thing that we have to do is we have to import the Boto3 module and then I want to import uh, JSON to format the uh, response that I have. So S3 is equal to, so if you want to perform any operation, you have to call the Boto3 module dot client. So which client you want to use? So we are currently using S3. So I'll just type S3. Okay. And the next thing that we want, we want to create the Lambda handler. Handler, isn't it? And uh, the parameters that we need, is event comma context okay so these are the two things that we need now so now we need the bucket information so the bucket that i have is uh, my hyphen new hyphen web hyphen bucket and the key the key is basically the path that i have so pythonholic slash um, I'll give sample 01 dot txt okay so this is the path that I have now this is the key that I want to access so if you go here so this is inside pytholic so python slash pytholic slash sample 01 so you can add the path if your file is inside this directory itself you can just provide the file name okay or the data that you want so next thing is to fetch the data that we have so there is a module called s3 dot get underscore object okay that you can use to basically fetch the data from the s3 so that is what we will do right now so try and here i'll write the data pull code so s3 dot get underscore object of we have to pass two parameters here so the first one is bucket which will be equal to bucket comma we need key key equal to key okay 
So that's it. There's the method that you're going to use to pull the data, get underscore object. And we already have the permission added to read files from S3. So don't worry about that. And the next thing is JSON underscore data is equal to data of. So there's the body parameters that we have, the body data that I have. So it will be body dot read. Okay, well, I have to close the accept. Accept exception as e and print e. Okay. Okay, so I hope the code is done now. So I can just save it and I'll just execute it. Test. Okay, so Byte says no, okay, I cannot do this. So I'll just remove this, not a problem. I was thinking it will be some, yeah. See, so I have the data now, okay. So I'll create a new file and I'll just add this uh, disclaimer content and I'll just save it in desktop. So this will be our next file. So I can just keep it as sample02.txt. Okay, so now I have saved this and on S3, I can just go ahead and upload it. Upload a file, add file, then sample02. Okay. Then just click on upload. So now you see sample02.txt and here when I go back and I just change it to 02 and save it and I test it, I should get the data. Okay. So I got the data here. Okay. So not a problem. So now this looks pretty simple. We have got the data from the S3 bucket that we have, but this doesn't add up. This is not we wanted to do, isn't it? So the next thing is the one that we wanted to do was our users are wanting us to have base64 encoded data. And uh, for that, we actually created the Lambda function and we wanted to give them the API gateway. Okay, so now that is what we'll do. We'll integrate API gateway to this. So to integrate API Gateway, what we can do is we can precisely add a trigger here. So you can just click on this add trigger. This can also be done through API Gateway itself. You go to API Gateway and try to integrate the Lambda function. That also is fine. You can do that. Okay. So now just create a API Gateway trigger point. Okay. So we'll create a new API. So it will be a new REST API. So I'll have a REST API now. So you can just provide IAM as the security. And just click on add and there are additional settings that you can give but i'm not going to give it right now so just give click on add so once you've clicked on add you can see the topology has been changed so now the trigger point that we have is api gateway so whenever any rest invocation is done from api gateway based on the function that i have it will basically call the lambda function that we have here okay so now uh, let's go to this invocation that we have okay so here in aws api gateways we will start off by invoking the lambda function that we have from our trigger point that we have that is api gateway okay so the first thing that we did was we had uploaded the file that we need on s3 then we created a lambda function where we actually wrote the code that actually fetches us the data from the aws s3 bucket so now we have to add the trigger point and here we are we are going to create a rest api if you see here the api gateway has been created and this is basically any request that you want to send but for our specific purpose we are going to create a method so that will be our get method isn't it so just click on actions and then click on get and then click on yes okay so now the invocation will be from the lambda function so this is the integration type so integrate with the lambda function just click on this one and don't select lambda proxy as of now and your lambda region is basically ap south one and you have to provide the function name isn't it so go back here and you can copy this function name and you can provide it here and just save it you are about to give API gateway permissions to invoke your Lambda function. Yes, that is what we want. So click on OK. 
so now it has been saved so your get api is now created so if you see here we have four methods that we have already discussed before i hope you remember that so method request integration request the lambda function my s3 function demo integration response and the method response okay so now click on test so if you see here we have query strings that we can pass we have the header values that we can pass which actually has application json as you can have like a header that you can pass from here but the main thing that we want to check here is basically by clicking on test and seeing whether it is able to invoke or not okay so click on test okay so you now are getting the response so this response is coming from your lambda function okay so that is 200 and that is the disclaimer that you get this is a disclaimer actually this is not a disclaimer but the text actually which we have uploaded isn't it so that is from our lambda function and here what it is doing is it is trying to execute this particular file and it is trying to fetch this particular file from this bucket okay but this is not that interesting because this is hard coded isn't it we don't want that we want our users to have the capability of passing the bucket name and the key value so that they can get any type of uh, data that they want or any data or any file that they want from the aws bucket isn't it s3 bucket isn't it so that is what we will do right now okay so now uh, we have to change some things in both the places so i'll just go ahead and uh, tell you what we are going to change here so you see here these are the two uh, bucket and the key parameters isn't it that is what we are trying to make it dynamic so the event type that you see here will configure the test event again and here we are going to pass the bucket sample 0 to dot txt isn't it so these were the so these were the inputs that we wanted to give to our function so now you can just save this okay i'll just remove this save it okay there was a comma so i'm sorry for that so now what happens is as i had already told you that the event actually can help you get the parameter values okay so that is what we are going to fetch it from okay we'll remove this and event of that will be a dictionary isn't it so how we are going to access data from the dictionary we are going to use the key okay so event of bucket and this will be obviously event of key okay so now this has become dynamic you can just save it and let's go back to the api gateway and let's see whether we are going to get the result or not click on test see because we don't have the keys that it needs okay so now we see the real test here okay so now if you just click on test now it will just pass on the values that the input has so if you go here to configure these are the inputs that are currently being passed so from the api gateway we are not getting the inputs anymore okay so this is the problem right now that we have so what do we need we need these values to come to the event from the api gateway so that is what we will do right now i'll just click on test once again to show you like yeah it works here okay so now the function actually works individually but for it to work from api gateway we need to do some modifications and that is what we will see now so go back to method execution and go back to method request okay so what do we need now we need query string parameters isn't it so they will be bucket okay so these are the query parameters that we are going to pass and that will be our key okay and you have to uh, create the validation and you have to just check on these two uh, check boxes to create the validation here it is telling that we have clicked on these two but our request validator is still not validating these parameters so you see here request validator and there is a pencil icon here you can just click on this and you can select verify query string parameters and headers okay and that's it 
okay so you have added the request validator and the two uh, string query string parameters okay so you can just click on method execution now paste it here and let us see whether we are able to execute the code or not no still we are not able to execute it okay so what is the problem now so the method actually is getting the value that it needs so the bucket and the key but the integration request actually this the data that has to be formatted for this functionality to receive or the function to receive we haven't done that okay so click on request in integration and here if you come back to this point here where we have the mapping templates you can just click on this and here we don't have any templates as of now okay so now if you click on this add mapping template i have to tell the content type to be application slash json because the content that i'm trying to pass on as a parameter is basically our json itself okay so application slash json you can just type application slash json and click on create yes your current pass through behavior will pass all request payloads directly to the endpoint without transformation unless there is a match for the incoming content type do you want to secure this integration to only allow request that match one of your defined content types yes i want it to be application slash json isn't it so now we have given that it is application json but what type of json we want we want to capture the parameters and we want to send it to the function that we have isn't it so first we collect the information from the user from the request parameters that we have or the query parameters that we have and we have to then pass it on to the function itself so we have to add the template as well okay so the template goes like this so you can also use uh, template that you want based on your requirements that you have so this is a basic json template that we have where you can just pass the bucket as your input parameters i'll just use this don't worry about it it will work just fine if you have any doubts you can just let me know and the second one is keys okay so you have to just provide the same way that you have provided for the bucket input dot param of key okay and this is the format that our function is going to expect the data from so now just close the bracket so we have the bucket here the input param of bucket and key is basically input param of key sorry params sorry it's params okay so now just what you need to do is you need to just click on save okay and then go back to the function that you have the get request that you have okay now click on test so now we have the function here my function demo and this is the parameters that i want to pass let's see whether we are able to run this or not click on test see now what we have done we have passed the inputs that we wanted to have from our query parameters that is bucket equal to my new bucket my new web bucket and the key that i have passed is pytholic slash sample 02.txt so this is very interesting because now we have the data here in the s3 bucket we have the functionality here and we have the access point or the resource here but what we wanted to do we wanted to actually have the base 64 encoding isn't it so let's modify our lambda function to pass on the base 64 okay so now there are slight changes that we have to make here to the part of the code that we need so the first thing is we have to import base 64 okay so this module has been imported now this comes by default so we don't have to worry about that and the next thing that we have to do is we have to format the json data that we are getting into base 64 so base 64 underscore bytes equal to base 64 dot what is the method name that is b64 encode so we are going to encode it and what are we going to encode we are going to encode the json data isn't it so now that we have encoded the json data what we are going to do we are going to pass it okay so once we have this we have to just pass the data here okay that's it so now we have encoded the data that we wanted to encode and now the next thing that we want to do is we are just going to pass it isn't it just now 
So now just save this and let's see the magic. See, now I'm getting the string here, but it is telling unable to march response. It is not able to parse that. Not a problem. I'll pass on the string itself. Okay, encoded string. See, okay. So now you have the data back. So this is the encoded data. So now everything is complete. So uh, users are able to upload the data to S3. Uh, user team B actually is able to access it from the API gateway, which actually is taking the data from AWS Lambda, which is in turn picking up the data from the Amazon S3 and converting it to base64 and then passing it on as a response to the users. Okay. So this was a very simple example on how we can integrate AWS S3 and AWS Lambda and AWS API gateways as a trigger point to our AWS Lambda. Okay, so I wanted to make this demo so that we can cover both the aspects of API gateways and AWS Lambda. But mostly the problem that people face is around having or passing the inputs uh, to the uh, Lambda function that is from the REST APIs by using the parameters. So that is the point that I wanted to cover in this demo so that you don't have to face any challenges with that. And I could have done this with simple code execution, but we have to do something different, isn't it? I hope it was fun and it was exciting for you guys to learn as well as it was fun for me to actually design this and to do this demo. So the next topic, Actually, I'm shifting from the AWS serverless to jumping on right away to AWS VPCs. So we'll cover that first. We'll cover that topic because it is a long pending topic and it is a very important topic for us. So we will cover that first. And the next topic that you're going to see on the channel for AWS will be the introduction to VPCs. Okay, so I hope you're excited for that. So I'll meet you in the next one. That's for AWS VPCs. And until then, it's Pytholic signing off.